Dr. Lai, for newly diagnosed AML patients, what are the latest available therapies? That's a great question. Uh, the last, I would say, handful of years have really seen a dramatic increase in the number of new treatment options for AML patients. Uh, specifically since 2017, the FDA has approved 10 new drugs for AML. Uh, that's both for patients who are newly diagnosed and in the relapse refractory set setting. And so what I would say is that we um, break our patients into two different categories in terms of being able to, to tolerate intensive chemotherapy versus non-intensive chemotherapy and as well as looking at uh, specific targeted mutations that patients um, may have so that we can uh, better, better understand the disease, but also um, treat these patients more specifically to try to maximize efficacy while minimizing toxicity. Um, and so specifically, I would say uh, for patients who have FLT3 mutations, there are drugs such as mitosporin and gilteritinib. Uh, there are drugs for mutations in IDH1 and IDH2, um, inositinib and ivocytinib, and recently, um, or in, um, in just in December of 2022, um, olusartinib was also approved for IDH1 mutated patients as well. Um, we have a, a general targeted agent that's an oral chemotherapy that probably has made the biggest difference in how we treat patients called venetoclax. And that's used in combination with either azacitidine or decitabine or low-dose citerabine, although most commonly in the United States, we use azacitidine or decitabine in combination with venetoclax. And that I think has, is really what I'd say has been practice changing. Um, for the most part, in terms of both increasing the complete remission rates as well as the overall survival for these patients. So I would say there are a lot of new drugs. It is all very exciting. The biggest activation tip in terms of takeaways is to ask your physician and your oncologist when you're talking with them about what all the newest therapies are and what would be uh, specifically the best treatment for their specific leukemia um, with respect to the different mutations. Dr. Lai, what are the, the latest approaches to combination chemotherapy uh, to treat AML? So uh, the, the latest approaches for combination chemotherapy would be um, the combination of, of a hypomethylating agent, azacitidine or decitabine, in combination with venetoclax. This is the most practice changing combination uh, that has been approved since, since um, you know, 2017, 2018. Um, and now more recently, uh, what's, what's been happening is now looking, so we call that a doublet. And now what's been looking at what, what um, we've been studying is now whether or not triplets are, are more effective. Um, when we do have triplet combinations, we do see an increase in toxicity. And so I don't think we haven't come up with the, um, the right algorithm in terms of what that exact formula should be. Um, but often I think about it in kind of a threefold in terms of when's the right time, um, what's the right combination, and how do we sequence the drugs. And I think the sequencing is the biggest, the biggest thing that we don't yet know. And how do we um, combine the two different, two different drugs in a way, and how do we give them in a way that will maximize efficacy while minimize the toxicity. So as an example is you know, do we give two drugs for a specific period of time? And then after, after some determined time point, do we then change it to a different set of combination of drugs um, to, to make sure that patients are getting the most benefit out of the drugs? And we don't know that yet, but I think that that's where the general direction where the landscape is heading. Um, so the activation tip I would take home from this is just to uh, have a conversation with your, with your physician about potential clinical trials and how um, combination therapies are being used. Mm -hmm.